Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to talk about Tailwind CSS grid layout. So hit the subscribe button and let's get started. I'm going to generate the simple HTML5 boilerplate and insert the Tailwind CDN and I'm going to add the title for this web page. When we talk about layouts in Tailwind CSS, there are two general ideas. We need a container to hold all the items. And in this scenario, that container is going to be called grid container. And then the items that the container holds are going to be grid items. On the container, we initiate a grid context and then a whole bunch of utility classes are then made available to us to manipulate and to basically reorder how we want different components on the screen appear and where they appear. The container for the grid is going to be a div and I'm going to give it a class of each screen and this is a height of 100 VH and within here I'm going to create nine divs and these divs are going to be the grid items. This is our result so far. Before doing anything, we need to initiate the grid context. And we can just do that by writing the grid keyword or the grid utility class. And as soon as I save that, since grid is a two-dimensional layout, nothing changes. When we initiate a grid context, by default, we end up with just one column and a few rows. The number of rows depends on the number of items. So in this scenario, we have nine items. That's why we have ended up with nine rows. You can better visualize that if you go to inspect and go to the layout and just turn on the uh, overlay grid. And then you can see we have just one column and then nine rows. So if I write grid calls one, this is just going to give me one column. This is the default behavior if I change it to two. Now we have two columns. We can change this number to three. Now we have three columns. We can change it to four. We have four columns. By the same token, we can determine the number of rows that we want as well. So I could get rid of this column and instead of that, I could just write rows. So this is going to give me four rows. We can see we have five more rows. They are something called the implicit grid. Now, whenever you determine explicitly how many columns or how many rows you want, they are called the explicit grid. And when you end up with more items in your grid container that you did not account for, they are called the implicit grid. And in this scenario, items five to nine, they are implicit grid. I am going to generate a few columns as well. So grid calls two, let's save that. So now we have two columns which are explicit, and then we have four rows which are also explicit, but then we have item number nine, which is an implicit grid or an implicit item. The gap is going to provide gap between or among the columns and among the rows. We could just use one keyword if we want the same spacing among columns and among rows. But if you want to really have control over different spacing for column and different spacing for row, then you need to determine the axis on which you want to apply this. So a gap X is going to provide a horizontal distance or horizontal gap, and that is going to refer the gap among the columns. So if I set it to two, this is going to provide eight pixels of gap among columns. And then if I write gap Y4, this is going to provide 16 pixels of gap vertically among the rows. The first set of utility classes refer to the alignment of grid items within their grid cells. We can align them horizontally using justify items classes. So if I set it to start, they're going to go to the start of their grid cell. If I set it to end, they're going to go to the end of their grid cell. Keep in mind, this alignment is horizontal. If I set it to center, they're going to go to the center. And then we have stretch, which is the default one, where the items stretch to grab the entire dimension of their grid cell. We can also manipulate this alignment vertically using the align items utility classes. We have items start, which is going to put all the items at the start of their grid cell vertically. We can put them at the end vertically. We can put them in the center. Here we are with grid columns two instead of two. I'm just going to remove two 
and I'm going to create square brackets. Now, in Tailwind CSS, square brackets are used when you want to create custom, when you want to add custom values. I say 200 pixel, and you need to separate them with an underscore 200 pixel. So how many units do I have here? I have two units. One is this one, and the second one is this one. So if I save this, how many columns am I going to end up with? I'm going to end up with two columns. What is the width for each column? It's going to be 200 pixels. Let's say for rows, I want 150 pixels. One row, another row, let's say I want it to be 200 pixels. And the third row, I want it to be 150 pixels again. I'm going to create another column to account for all the items. So let's save that, and there we go. There is a white border around the web page. And that is our grid container. But where are our grid items collectively? They are towards the top left. And let's talk about the, uh, the utility classes that help us align the items collectively within their grid container. If I want to align the items horizontally within their grid container, I could use the justify classes. So if I set it to justify start, this is not going to do anything because they are at the start of their container horizontally. If I set it to end, let me just enlarge this a little bit. If I set it to end and save it, they're going to go to the end of their container. If I set it to center, they're going to be in the center. We could also say between and the space is going to go between that. And let's set it to around. This is how around looks like. For around, for example, this space on the left of the item number seven is equal to half of the space on the right of item number seven. But if I set it to evenly, the space is going to be evenly on both sides of item number seven. This is horizontal alignment. I'm going to set it to center. If I say content start, everything is going to be to the start. Content end everything is going to bring everything down to the end of the container center is going to put it in the center and again we have the between we have the around and then we have the evenly utility classes i'm going to set it to center we can also change the alignment of a single item within its grid cell for example i am going to select item number five right here and i could say justify self start this is going to go to the start of its grid cell horizontally this is going to go to the end of its grid cell horizontally. And this is going to be the center of the grid cell horizontally. We could also use the self start to control this alignment vertically. So that's start. This is end. And this is going to be center. And you can always use stretch which is the default one. There is so much more that I could talk about when it comes to the grid layout of Tailwind CSS, and that's going to go way beyond the scope of this video and what I what I had intended for this video. And I'm just going to hit the brakes right here, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next video.